Okay, we're going to get started with our program. Good afternoon and welcome to the Long Beach Area Chambers joint presentation with the American Lending Center and Sunstone Management. My name is Jeremy Harris and I will have the pleasure of serving as the Chambers President and CEO this year and also as your moderator today. We have an excellent program today and we'll dive into the next round of the Paycheck Protection Program, more commonly known as the PPP. So with that, let's go on with some brief housekeeping items before we start our program this afternoon. If you have any question during the program today, please use the Q&A feature, which is typically found on the icon bar at the bottom of your screen. Please note that this webinar will be recorded and distributed to all registrants uh, and accessible to the chamber members, our partners, and our guests. If you have any additional questions after the webinar, you may reach out to our special events manager, Amanda Donahue at the chamber office, who will also be sending out a recap of this program, any materials, and of course, the recording from today's presentation. And lastly, if you wanna know more about joining the chamber, our benefits, and how we're helping businesses and nonprofit organizations, please send me a note in the chat feature and our Vice President of Membership, Natalie Layton, from our team will follow up with you. Now, before I get started, let me give you a brief overview and background about American Lending Center and Sunstone Management, both of which are chamber members. American Lending Center is a private non-banking lending institution and nationally recognized leader in small business lending. American Lending Center commercial loans provide, excuse me, provides commercial loans to eligible small businesses nationwide, primarily through the Small Business Administration, also known as SBA, through their programs. In June of 2020, the Department of Treasury and SBA approved American Lending Centers as a Paycheck Protection Program lender. American Lending Center is also only a handful of non-bank PPP lenders so designated to provide immediate financial relief to struggling small businesses through the program as originally authorized by the CARES Act, and we're happy to have them here in Long Beach. Sunstone Management is also a diversified private capital management and investment firm that offers comprehensive wealth management solutions to its high net worth clients with a focus on investments in U.S. startups, small businesses, and lower middle markets. We appreciate American Lending Center and Sunstone Management taking the time this afternoon to share their knowledge on preparing for the PPP application process. So very important right now. Now let's meet our panelists who will be providing this information today and take us through the program. First, John Shin. He's the founder and current chief executive officer of American Lending Center headquartered here in Long Beach. As a big advocate of entrepreneurship and startups, John has a great passion for small businesses. Over the last decade, his leadership has guided ALC, American Lending Center, to become one of the most successful small business lenders in the country. John received the Coleman's Report SBA 504 Lender of the Year Award for his outstanding contributions in 2017, and we're happy here at the Chamber to call him a friend and a member. John, welcome. Scott you, Thompson, Jeff. who will be leading today's presentation, is a compliance officer at the American Lending Center. Scott trains key staff on regulations and procedures for lending lines of business. He's also an act, has an active role in managing the orientation, underwriting, and forgiveness of the Paycheck Protection Program, again, the PPP loans. Scott will be taking us through our program today. Scott, welcome. And last but certainly not least, Adam Creo is the Director of Business Development at Sunstone Management, the sister company of American Lending Center, also headed, headquartered here in Long Beach. Adam's work in Long Beach has led over to $130 million in private, direct private commercial real estate investment and has defined Long Beach as one of the region's hub for entrepreneurship. We've definitely seen that firsthand here at the Chamber. Adam, welcome. With that being said, we've got our program set, our panelists introduced, and I'm gonna turn it this time over to Scott to take us through the program. Scott, it's all yours. Thank you so much, Jeremy and Amanda for having us here. We really appreciate it, and, and hopefully we can be of help to your members. Uh, let me get right into this presentation and just kind of overview a little bit so everybody knows, uh, I'm sure you're all here aware of the new PPP regulations that have come out. We'll go ahead and get started. And we're gonna do this in, in uh, hopefully an orderly fashion for you guys as we um, go through some of these finer points of the PPP regulations. We're gonna start with the legislative update. <clears throat> we're gonna talk about regulations for anybody that has not received a PPP loan yet and some of the updates. 
we're going to go through uh, some of the changes for existing PPP borrowers. And then we're going to talk about that opportunity to get a second draw loan. And lastly, just go over some of the uh, application process for you. So we're going to assume today that uh, everybody here has some knowledge of PPP. Most likely, most of you have already received a PPP loan during the first round uh, last year. If you have not and you find yourself uh, in you know, maybe a position where you don't quite understand PPP and, and at the basic level, uh, feel free to reach out to us you know, after the meeting and we can go over a more basic overview of what PPP is. But for, I think for the purposes of this conversation, uh, most of you probably understand the little bit uh, basics about PPP. So first of all, we'll discuss the legislative update. If uh, you haven't heard, um, well, I'm happy to be uh, the announcer of the fact that uh, the president signed on December 27th, the uh, HR 133, which restarts the PPP program uh, funds the government through September 30th. Uh, but more importantly for us in our discussion today is the focus on the PPP. The uh, Department of Treasury and Small Business Administration just started rolling out the regulations last week. Uh, this week uh, here at American Lending Center, we started opening up our applications on our website. And uh, just keep this date in mind, March 31st, which is when this uh, new round of PPP is set to expire. And that's for PPP first and second draw loans uh, are set to expire on March 31st, 2021. So with those dates in mind, um, also keep in mind as the uh, SBA is rolling out their new regulations, uh, a lot of lenders are opening up their applications this week, but the SBA will not start taking most applications until the beginning of next week. So we're gearing up for that. Uh, hopefully at American Lending Center, we've been uh, designated as a community finance institution and we're anxiously awaiting that door to open for us uh, any moment. So uh, first we're gonna start with the regulations that affect anybody that has not received a PPP loan and those that are looking for a PPP loan for the first time. Um, all of the regulations that are currently in place are still active. So um, again, if you're familiar and, and you're in that position where you're ready to start this process for the first time, um, just keep in, uh, in mind that uh, what you're finding online may not include some of these new regulations. And I just wanna go over these real quick that uh, on top of what's already out there and been discussed at length over the last um, 10 months or so is that businesses are now uh, there's additional businesses that are now eligible to receive these PPP loans. That includes 501c6s, in addition to the 501c3s that have already been allowed to receive these. Uh, now housing cooperatives, direct marketing organizations, TV and radio stations, and local newspapers have all been uh, recently included in eligible business types. <clears throat> um, another change is the new regulations now include that uh, payroll cost calculations can have uh, their life, disability, and vision and dental insurances included in their payroll cost. So right now we can include um, anything that is part of the, your payroll costs as well as health insurance um, and your uh, payments to a retirement fund. But the new regulations also expand that to include the life, disability, vision, and dental. The new regulations also uh, clarify the covered period. This is the period after you received your PPP funds. Uh, it was at eight weeks and then they change it to 24 weeks and it caused a lot of confusion for a lot of borrowers. The new regulations uh, clarify this that a borrower can select a covered period between eight weeks and 24 weeks. So any period uh, during that, that window and that's the, basically the period you have to right size your uh, payroll and to meet the requirements to achieve full forgiveness from your loan. The new regulations also expand forgivable expenses to include operation costs, property damage associated with the political unrest last year, and uh, supplier costs and worker protection costs, which includes like a personal protective equipment. 
So if you're having to buy masks or gloves for your employees, that's now covered as a uh, forgivable expense. But keep in mind that there is still the uh, regulation that you need to use at least 60% of the funds for payroll, but now we have some additional costs that we can use that funds for, um, not just for your rent and uh, utilities. So uh, finally, an additional regulation that's come out is that the new PPP loans that are starting this year are able to use payroll calculations from 2019 or from 2020. So this is an important one for, for businesses that maybe had just started in 2019 and didn't have much payroll and, and weren't uh, able to apply for that PPP loan that now uh, you can go ahead and use your 2020 payroll costs to calculate the cost of your, your loan amount. So that's just the section of those who have not yet received a PPP loan. And keep in mind, some of these regulations will apply and we'll talk about now for anybody that has received a first round PPP loan, um, there are some regulations, some really good uh, things that affect you. The first one is if you have your PPP loan from last year, uh, a lot of you are probably worried how this affects your taxes. Uh, the IRS came out last year and said uh, that the PPP loans were essentially uh, gonna be viewed as revenue and uh, you weren't able to use those as uh, tax to uh, offset your tax deductible expenses. And so now that's been clarified. And so they no longer affect your tax deductible expenses. So you're still gonna be able to deduct uh, your expense, your uh, payroll expenses and other things as normal. So that's great news for anybody that currently has a PPP loan. Another uh, thing is that borrowers who received a first loan last year, but uh, weren't able to include some of the calculations we just went over, <clears throat> like the new changes in life, disability, and vision, and dental, that you can now go back and include those insurance payments and reapply to get an additional uh, bump in your first draw loan amount. <clears throat> they also made it easier uh, for forgiveness applications for loans under $150,000 or less. We're still waiting for the final application forms from the SBA for this category. So now any loan under $150,000, you're gonna have a simplified application process when it comes time to seek forgiveness. <clears throat> and then lastly, there was, uh, again, a point of confusion here for a lot of borrowers and, and disappointment when they received an Economic Injury Disaster Loan, or EIDL, advance, and then they had to turn around and deduct that amount from their PPP forgiveness amount. But Congress removed that, and now uh, your EIDL is no longer going to be uh, deducted from your PPP loan amount. So <clears throat> any borrower that had this happen to them, uh, you can look for the SBA to uh, refund you that uh, amount of money there uh, so that you don't have to, to suffer that any longer. So those are some important changes for, for anybody that participated in that first round. <clears throat> and now we'll get into the reason that most of you are probably here, which is finding out about how do I get a second loan? Um, a borrower is generally eligible for a second draw PPP loan if they've uh, done all three of these things. First, they had to have received a first draw PPP loan and, and you will or have used the full amount for the authorized uses. uses. So uh, before you can get that second draw loan, your first draw loan had to have been used. And, and so that's step one. So if you're here getting a, a first draw loan, um, before you can get that second draw, you're going to need to wait until you've used up the, phone, the funds from the first draw. The second qualification is that you have no more than 30 employee, 300 employees, excuse me, uh, and that's a per location limit. <clears throat> For those in the restaurant industry and things like that, um, you know, there's, there's some other details around this uh, criteria that we can discuss, but basically that's a 300 employee limit per location uh, for each um, <clears throat> EIN that you have uh, with the IRS. The third qualification, <clears throat> this is an important one, your company needs to demonstrate at least a 25% reduction in gross receipts between comparable quarters in 2019 and 2020. So if you can choose uh, one quarter in 2020, say quarter three, 
and you received a 25% reduction in your gross receipts compared to quarter three in 2019, then you would qualify for this second draw loan. <clears throat> Some other key provisions to keep in mind of for the second draw loans. Um, this one's a big one, again, for hotels and restaurants, anybody uh, that has an NAICS code starting with 72, you uh, now get to calculate three and a half times your monthly payroll when you figure out your second draw loan amount. Uh, all others are the standard two and a half times payroll amount, <clears throat> same as what it was for the first round of PPP. Uh, something else to watch out for is to make sure you know that the loan amount is capped at $2 million for the second draw loans. Also, certain business types have been excluded, and these are new exclusions that apply to the second draw loans. This includes political lobbyists, uh, registered foreign agents, uh, businesses formed in China or with a director that resides in China, uh, entities that receive grant money from the Live Venues Grant Program, that's a new program that uh, Congress just established. So if you're planning on getting that live venues grant program, you should not be looking to get a second draw PPP loan. <clears throat> and also businesses that are permanently closed are excluded from getting the second draw loan. And the other thing to remember is that the second draw loan <clears throat> is fully forgivable. And the rules are basically the same as the first draw loan as far as how you need to use those funds. So these are some really key provisions to keep in mind of and, and look out for. And that's basically the, uh, the summary of the first and second draw loans and the changes that we've seen. <clears throat> and lastly, just how to apply. There's a new form for the second draw loans. We don't anticipate seeing many manual applications. Uh, hopefully, you know, we've all grown past the pen and paper stage of our life. And uh, here at American Lending Center, we've opened up our online application portal. Uh, you can go to our website, apply now. Uh, if you're not using American Lending Center, uh, just look for your lending institution and uh, I'm sure you'll have uh, the opportunity to apply online, same as you did first round. Um, documentation is gonna vary, but typically it's gonna include uh, the similar documents you had in round one, uh, your color photo ID, your payroll tax documents, uh, payroll records, 1099, Schedule C, articles, incorporation, utility bill, lease agreement, et cetera. And proof you've been in business February 15th, 2020. So, um, you know, pay attention to those document requirements and uh, you start getting everything ready. If you're not ready to apply now, these are things that you can start gathering and, and look back at your first draw loan documents. You're just going to be the same uh, documents you're probably going to need for a second round. So the application process is simple. It's just one form and the documentation requirements are very similar to what they were before. So that's a quick rundown and I know we have a lot of questions in the queue. Uh, let me uh, stop the share here, <clears throat> turn my video back on. We can give it back to Jeremy, I think to, right, to moderate the question period. And I'm gonna take a drink of water. Great. Thanks, Scott. As you take a drink of water there and, and get caught up, we appreciate the info. And uh, yes, we've got some uh, few questions. And, and as a reminder, please use that Q&A um, function at the bottom of your screen. Um, and we'll get to your questions as they come in. We'll try to answer both in written form and then, of course, here live um, with our uh, presenters and our panelists. Um, Scott, let's talk first about, you talked about um, how do you show, or you talked about a revenue reduction of 25% for that, uh, um, I believe that it's only on the second draw, because uh, obviously if you take out the first draw, you've already got it, you're using it. So on that second draw PPP, you've got to show that 25% reduction. How do you go about doing that? You do, if, if you're under $150,000 loan amount, um, technically you don't have to show until you go to seek forgiveness for your second draw loan, <clears throat> because you know, your taxes haven't been done yet. And, you know, if you're under that loan amount, there's a good chance you don't have a CPA maybe uh, doing your books on a regular basis. And so you just, uh, you know, keep in mind for that, uh, that if your lender's asking for those and you're under 150,000, um, you may be able to say, wait, I'm not ready for that yet, but I know I've experienced that revenue reduction. Um, if you're ready to, to show that, um, you can do it in a number of ways. You can use your quarterly, 
uh, tax forms. You can use uh, quarterly statements. Uh, you can also use your bank statements if you need to. And you know you can uh, draw up your, your PNL and uh, do that uh, quarter to quarter and, and show that. Great, great, appreciate that. And um, I, I think I, I heard, um, and this, and correct me if I'm wrong, if you know, you're a smaller business and maybe you're on that $150,000 uh, cusp. When we talk about forgiveness, isn't there a one page, typically a one page document you, f you fill out for forgiveness if your PPP loan is under $150,000 and then it's a little bit more of an arduous um, forgiveness process if it's over that? Am I correct right. in saying that? Yeah, you're right. That's the new regulation. And that's if it's exciting for anybody that's 150 or less, um, you're, you're going to have that uh, easier forgiveness application process. Okay. By no means if, uh, you know, don't, don't let paper sway you, but if you, if you think you're around that 150,000, you might want to, you might want to pay attention to that, I guess, yeah. for the easier forgiveness. That's right. Um, another question that comes in is, uh, will my loan amount for the second draw loan be the same as my first draw? So typically, yes. Typically, okay. yes. Typically you're going to be uh, using your 2019 payroll and you're going to be using your 2019 payroll again for the second draw. And, and so, so that would be, but if you're a restaurant or a hotel, if you fall under that NAICS 72 category, you're going to get three and a half times payroll instead of two and a half times payroll. So if you're in that category, you're definitely going to get a bump in the second draw loan. So that's, that's good. The other way you can get a little bump um, is again, if, if you had a lot of insurance payments, group insurance, uh, that dental life that you did not claim the first time around, you can go back and claim that again on your first draw before you file for forgiveness. Great, I uh, appreciate that. Uh, we've got a couple of questions here and I'm gonna kind of combine it in, into one um, regarding uh, about um, how quickly will the funding take place assuming the application is complete and accurate? So um, when can that person uh, get their funds? Sure, it's a great question. It's an important question. I, I think, uh, you know, the, the SBA is just starting their, their process of accepting applications in, in a very small way. And uh, we anticipate that early next week, they're going to be accepting them in a very big way. So, so once the SBA accepts your application, um, you know, the, the process, it goes back to us and we fund that loan and, and we typically have a few days to do that. So that's, that's usually like a three day process between the time it's approved and we've received all the documents from the borrower and we're able to issue those funds into their bank account. So the, the real question is uh, for the borrowers is how quickly can you get the information to us, right? And how quickly can we get those documents in hand? Once we have it all and we've gone through the uh, review process, which is very quick, uh, we're talking a matter of minutes or, or hours um, and everything looks good. It's approved by the SBA and you get the funds in your bank account in just a few days. Great, great. Appreciate that, Scott. Uh, probably one of the most important questions here is uh, up next and we uh, talked a little bit about forgiveness already, but um, I've got that PPP now. What do I need to do for 100% forgiveness? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, you know, the main thing is uh, the rules are the same for the first draw as they are for the second. So the important number to remember is 60%. You got to use at least 60% for payroll. And as long as you do that, then the rest of that 40%, uh, you can use 100% for payroll. That's good too. You know, uh, that's the purpose of the funds. It's called the Paycheck Protection Program. And so, so keep in mind, you got to use at least 60% for payroll. And then the other 40%, if you have that, uh, needs to be used for the eligible expenses. That includes rent uh, or mortgage payments. That includes utility payments. And now that includes supplier costs, property damage. And it also includes that uh, protective gear if you need to buy that for your employees or your place of business. So those are the eligible expenses. Anything beyond that um, is not necessarily an, el el an eligible uh, PPP expense. So keep that in mind and, and make sure you're using your funds for those purposes only. Great, great. Now, Scott, you talked a little bit about um, who can be eligible for the second draw PPP, and there's some new programs now, um, like the Live Venue Grant Program. Um, the question here being, 
Um, would you want to apply for both just in case you wouldn't get one over the other? We know how you know the, the funds come out and uh, lots of folks go after these funds and sometimes some, mm -hmm. some of this funding runs out and I know the live venue grant is a new fund. Um, so any advice or, or direction you could give somebody maybe applying for both at the same time? I wish I was more knowledgeable on the live venue fund. I'm, I, you know, I'll be honest, I'm not as, as knowledgeable on that. Um, so, but typically with the PPP funds is a very quick process. Um, we're not worried about the fund running out. Uh, there's no indication of that now that the larger banks are very slow in, in getting on board with this. And it doesn't seem to be the rush that it was uh, last year when this started. And keep in mind with the 25% reduction requirement, there's not going to be as many businesses as well as the cap of $2 million mm -hmm. per loan is a, is a big help, especially for the smaller institutions, uh, because those big boys aren't going to be able to get as much in the second round. So I, you know, it, again, we're just, it's our educated guess, right? But uh, sure. my experience is looking good, like it's not going to run out. So um, yeah, if I was a live venue, it seems like a much a better opportunity for them. Um, there, there's more available to them with that grant program. Um, and, and, you know, I wouldn't want to jeopardize that by rushing into a PPP application. And then, you know, that's going to happen in a matter of days. Sure. And then you couldn't get that live venue grant. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Scott. And, and along those lines about when somebody can apply for PPP, I know the, the portal opened for certain institutions starting on Monday um, and then um, starting today or, or maybe perhaps tomorrow, it opens up for a little bit more. And then what what's the, if, if I'm a, um, you know, a small business and I have a banking relationship, and this goes into another question we have here, when do I start that process? Because maybe I wasn't in the process on Monday when it opened. And maybe, you, and this is a long question, but maybe you can talk about what opened on Monday and what are we waiting for in the future here? Yeah, it's really confusing. <clears throat> Sometimes yeah. the government likes to make things a little too confusing for us. And, you know, that's that's what happens, right? This is a big program with a lot of different uh, moving parts. And they're really trying to, to get funds into the smaller businesses' hands. They're trying to get funds into uh, those underserved communities, uh, you know, women and minorities, which is a big focus of us here at American Women's Center. And, and so, you know, they developed this category of a community finance institution. It's a little fluid and it can be a little frustrating, but, uh, you know, really what that meant was that they were going to give them a little head start <clears throat> so that institutions like that that focus on those groups uh, could get in the door a little quicker. And, and so, yeah, they opened that up on Monday for first draw loans only. <clears throat> and then they opened it up today for second draw loans only. And those are for those community finance institutions. So, uh, you know, we have uh, received mixed reports about whether we're a CFI or not. And we're trying to get that clarified. And the SBA said yes. And okay, so waiting for our access. So in the meantime, sure. we're accepting applications, we're processing those applications, and we're ready to, uh, you know, click go as soon as the SBA turns that, that green light on. And so I think for most financial institutions, that's going to happen early next week. Okay. But look for everybody to start accepting applications in, in the near future, in the next few days uh, to next week, probably uh, they should start. And again, we're, we're open now. You can get yep. an application and, and we can go and, um, you know, but don't be surprised if it takes a few days to get your SBA number and your approval. That's what we're all waiting for. Great. And then that leads me into my next question. I'm sorry, go ahead, Adam. Jeremy kind of um, hopping off that with uh, some of the comments. Um, one of the biggest things that we do see it and changes um, this time around, obviously independent contractors are eligible, but also the loan process for loans under 150 grand are so much easier. And I think the SBA realizes how much of a challenge it was last time around and make, especially a lot of the businesses, especially Long Beach, are entrepreneurial based. Um, you know, it's the, the process is way much easier. The, um, the application, not only the application process, but the documents, work, uh, which is great. And then also looking at the first round that American Lending Center uh, was able to fund and support, you know, with small business owners. Um, a lot of those, those funds were able to be uh, funded within three days. And I think I think there's a lot of people that are participating and, and, and listening in. Um, the last time around, it could have, was very challenging, especially if you're working with some of the other larger institutional partners. Whereas this uh, American Lending Center was able to fund and support small businesses fairly quickly. 
um, and most importantly, um, have your you have that direct line with the SBA. You know, I know customer service is always um, our our key focus, and a lot of that once your you know um, application is submitted, you're going to have someone to call, whether it's God, whether it's me, uh, whether it's you know another member on American Lending Center's team. You know, those are very huge initiatives. Um, I know John and and that's really made it. Great. Well, th thanks for that, Adam. Appreciate that. And th that kind of goes into this next question that uh, continues to pop up is that, um, do I have to apply with the same bank, you know, lender as the, as the first time around? You do not. And thankfully, uh, I know a lot of people were unhappy with, with their lenders in the first round and some of the bigger uh, banks, you know, we won't mention by name, but uh, you know, it's, it's it's it is what it is. They they have a a, a big institution, and it's difficult for them to to maneuver, uh, you know, with with a program like this. So that's why we're here. You know, local here, Long Beach. We're we're here to to help. And and like Adam says, you get a, a warm body to talk to, and and somebody on the phone that can help you out. That's knowledgeable and and trained. And and this is a big piece of our business line, and it's something that we take very seriously versus. You know some of the larger institutions where this is maybe are not quite uh, something that they you know uh, need to worry about in as far as their bottom line is concerned so so yeah that that's kind of uh, important to remember that you do not have to reapply with the same lender that you had for the first round uh, but do keep in mind that if you're going to choose another institution to go with um, you know you're going to have to uh, show them the same documents you had to show the first lender which uh, so just package those all up again and, uh, you know, go back to what you had before and, and get ready to, to resubmit and, and for a quick review on that as well. Sure. No, thank, thank you, Scott. I, I think it answers uh, this question here. So to the extent that you're comfortable, you know, repeating any of the comments, you know, uh, one question came in is that there was better places to apply for the funds than others. I think you talked a little bit about that and then any ins institutions to avoid, again, to your comfort level if you want to address that. But I think on the back side, also um, directly to the American Lending Center, um, does an individual need to have an account with you already in order to apply um, for question. PPP? Great question. And that's one of the things, you know, we're, we're a non-bank lender is what we're called. And, and as a non-bank lender, we don't have checking and savings accounts. And so we don't have any requirement to have an account, nor will we ever ask you to have an account. And so we strictly are just here as a lender to, to provide that support. And uh, you're not paying us for that. Uh, the, the, the government's giving us, a, you know, a, a percentage of these loans uh, out of their funds, not your funds. So um, we're, we're just here as the middleman um, providing this opportunity for, for the business owner. So, so that's one thing to consider when you're looking into an institution to choose. Um, you know, if you don't, if you didn't like your current bank, you, you like your checking accounts and you like your saving accounts and you want to keep banking with that bank, but you weren't real happy with the PPP process, that's okay. You can go ahead and do a PPP loan with uh, somebody like us, a non-bank lender who's not going to be pounding you for those requirements. We, we don't have anything like that. All right. Thanks, Scott. Uh, I mean, it, you, this is also a really good question too, is um, there are some banks that aren't, you know, choosing to participate in this program. It's an opt-in program, correct? Correct. Yep. Yeah, and I think some of us and uh, many of um, the businesses saw that in the beginning with the first round until some of those institutions maybe got on board later later on. So appreciate you guys clarifying that. Um, question about um, eligibility for 501c4s. I know we've been talking a lot about um, businesses here. I know in the second uh, wave here, 501c6s now are eligible. And the first wave of PPP 501c3s um, are um, were eligible, and I'm assuming they're eligible again. So a lot of C3, 4, 6 questions thrown at you, Scott. Um, any, can you uh, tackle any of those? Yeah, I think when we're talking fours, we're talking about like uh, labor unions, right? Is that is that probably? I, I, I get all my C's mixed up, but, it, but so you have your C3s or your charity uh, organizations or nonprofits, your C6s where the chamber falls in, or is, is most of the time your membership based organizations and your C4s can be, you know, a little bit of a combination of uh, association, labor union, um, some labor unions, um, uh, city um, type nonprofits that have a tie. So think maybe um, business improvement districts, um, for example. Yeah, unfortunately, I don't. I don't believe the 501c fours uh, are uh, eligible. They weren't in the first round, and I don't believe they are now. So, um, 
you know, I'll go back and, and look and, and see if you have a specific borrower, um, you know, that's asking that question. If you're listening now, if you see this later, uh, reach out to me, uh, reach out to Adam and uh, we can uh, maybe look that up for you. But as far as I'm aware, they're, they're not included in that new eligibility. It only included the 501c6s. Yep. And the C3s again, the charitable organizations, I assume as well. Been, yeah, C, C3s have already been, yeah, they're good, yeah. Great. Um, here's another great question, Scott, and you touched on this a little bit at the beginning. Um, can you confirm or reconfirm the application time frame um, for the use of the funds from eight to 24 weeks? There, I know there's some confusion around what does eight weeks mean and what does 24 yeah, four weeks mean? Yeah. You know, what's yeah. the range? It's, it's an important thing. So uh, it's an important thing that can be kind of confusing, confusing for sure. So, so your covered period, once you receive those loans into your into your bank account, Okay, the, the clock kind of starts. Um, it, it, that's the best way to look at it. There's some other details in that. You can start the clock on your next payroll start period. Um, and so you have eight to 24 weeks to, to use those funds for the designated purposes. And, and that's, how, that's how much time you have to right size your employee count. So if you had 10 employees uh, last February 15th, which is the the, the date that matters in all of this, if you had 10 employees and you get your funds today, you're going to have eight to 24 weeks to get back to that 10 employee level, or at least close to it as you can. And, and so most people are going to want to choose the 24 weeks because <laughs> that gives them more time uh, to use those funds and to right size their employee count. But others may uh, not be able to make it stretch 24 weeks and they're going to want to use an eight week period and, and quickly right size. And then they may, they may actually run out of funds and, and have to go back to furloughing or whatever, you know, issues they've been dealing with because of this pandemic. So just uh, take a good look at that. If, if you've got a, um, every situation is a little bit different and, you know, you might need to tailor it to you. And, and that's what's nice about it. If you need a 10 week period, you can do 10 weeks. And if you need a, a 20 week period, you can do 20 weeks, but it just has to fall between eight to 24 weeks uh, for you to, to meet the requirements. Great. So Scott, I've got a hypothetical here for you. Um, you know, a lot of uh, companies may have not applied for the, the first round of PPP, certainly 501c6s, this is their first time being eligible. Um, so they would be um, receiving a first time PPP. Could hypothetically, could that organization or business use up those funds by bringing folks back, have that eight week period, and then as long as it's before March 31st, could they go back and get a second round of PPP? Yeah, they can. So, so the requirement is that they need to use the funds and the funds yep. need to be used. And for some, that's going to be easier than others, right? And, and But for most of the businesses, I got to think that once those funds hit their books and hit their account, that it's, it's going to burn up pretty quickly. So as soon as that uh, gets used, you can go ahead and re-up and, and, and get your second uh, withdrawal loan. So you have between now and March 31st to do that scenario that you're talking about right now. So anybody that falls into that category, uh, it's imperative that they get that first draw loan uh, quickly in, in the next few weeks to give them that amount of time uh, to use those funds. They can choose that eight week cover period. And then we, they'll be off to the races. They'll be good to go. Okay. And I would assume if, a, in, a, if a, in that scenario, if that organization or business were to do that, um, uh, forgiveness falls on the, on the same on both. There, nothing changes on the forgiveness side. You're going to have, you may have overlapping cover periods. They haven't addressed that yet. It's a okay. question that us lenders have uh, for the SBA. I, mean, I was on a call with them on Monday and they didn't address it then. And, and so I think that's going to come out in the rules um, and they're going to have to have some allowances for that overlap. But remember, the eight weeks is maintaining your staff at the level uh, that you're required to for eight weeks. And, um, you know, if there's an overlap there and the next loan comes in and maybe they overlap by a week or two, you're going to have another eight weeks to keep your staff size right sized um, at your requirement. Great. No, I appreciate that, Scott. Lot, lots of lots of uh, unknowns around, you know, PPP and and, and I know our folks want to make sure they do this correctly so they can get the most funds possible and then utilize them um, for that forgiveness period. Um, we're almost at the tail end of our, our questions here, and I'll remind folks one last time. Um, if you've got any final questions, please use that Q&A 
uh, button at the at the end. And uh, before we go back there, Scott, is there anything you want to leave our audience before we wrap up and maybe answer one or two last questions? Um, you know, maybe major takeaways you want folks to know, timing, um, getting that paperwork put together. Uh, I know we've addressed a lot this afternoon. Well, you know, I probably leave it to Adam to, to summarize uh, a more, you know, I, I think people have heard from me a lot, but thank you for the opportunity, Jeremy, and, and for everybody. I, uh, again, we're here uh, to help. Uh, we're, we're not somebody that's going to sit here and hard sell you and tell you, you know, we're the best and, and but we, we feel pretty, pretty confident about our abilities and what we do and, and, and we're happy to, to just help and educate people and uh, make sure all these small businesses, especially in Long Beach, uh, have all the help that they need and, and uh, can get the funds that are owed to them. Uh, so, but, but I'll let Adam kind of summarize for the company and uh, for John if he wants to. Yeah, so I mean, just, um, just you know, following up with Scott, um, a, lot of the, a lot of the work that we're doing, is, you know, especially um, you know, a ton of small business owners, uh, a lot of woman-owned businesses, uh, a number of restaurant groups, uh, you know, and really, I think our, our passion and pride is with you know, working with entrepreneurs and small business owners that, you know, especially in the last round where, you know, may have been left behind, you know, it was, I know it was, it was extremely challenging from, from many points of view. And, you know, the SBA has done a great job as far as trying to open the program up to more business owners, trying to ease the process, especially for those loans under $150,000. And you know, that's one of the things that we, we built our website around, you know, the application on our website at AmericanLendingCenter.com is fairly easy to, to navigate. Um, you know, what we do recommend is if you are going through that process and you are going through AmericanLendingCenter.com, enter in as much information as you can. If you don't have a document, that's okay. You know, our loan officers will be able to review with you directly and say, hey, you know what? You want to, you know, great. Um, here's some other things that we can think about. But for us, being able to facilitate the really the loan processing as seamless as possible. Um, and that's that's what we're here to do. And, and I think, you know, um, uh, other lending institutions left that door open and, and we are knocked into the park last time around. And we're just trying to, you know, hit the grand slam. Great. Appreciate that, Adam. Uh, this time, we're going to be uh, cognitive of everybody's time. Um, the Chamber, we like to provide these uh, events and, and do it on a timely basis. I want to say thank you to Scott, Adam, John as our panelists in providing this information. As a reminder, if you've got questions about this program or others, please visit us, visit us at lbchamber.com. Um, we have a COVID resource page where a lot of this information will be posted. Obviously, as a reminder, a recap will go out about this program along with the recording. A lot of the questions that were asked here today will be included in that, of course, and then also the contact information for our, our panelists and any follow-up questions you may have for them so they can assist you with hopefully applying for your PPP in the near future. So with that, we'll say thank you and good afternoon. Scott, Adam, John, thanks once again, and we'll be in touch. Thank you. Thank you so much. You bet. Thank you, Jeremy.